Michael Myers with his creepy eyes, Jason Freddy Pennywise. As you look out your window, they all draw near. Don't be afraid. Halloween is here. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Gen X Dividend Investor here. Halloween's a great time for horror movie marathons, but if you want to watch something really scary, just turn on the news. Speaking of scary, in this video I'm going to tell you about the Fear Gauge, aka the Fear Index, aka the VIX, which some investors use to speculate on or use against as a hedge against what they think will happen to the stock market. Then I'm going to tell you an inspirational quote and story with a powerful lesson that I've personally incorporated frequently. So I recommend you watch this entire video to help me out as well as to learn about the VIX, otherwise you can probably count on your house getting TP'd by fiendish ghouls. Please consider hitting the thumbs up button, subscribing if you haven't yet, and click that bell notification. Thanks, I really appreciate your support. Finally, I'm not a professional wealth manager or which you can predict the future, so don't take anything I say as financial advice. So what is the VIX exactly? Well, it's a Procter & Gamble ointment that my mom used to rub on my chest when I was a kid, but for this video it's a ticker and an index that some investors use to measure the stock market's expected volatility. It's intended to reflect the market's expectation of volatility over the next 30 days and is sometimes seen as a way to measure the level of risk, fear, or stress in the market. I see the VIX as a simple way to understand the sentiment of the market, which is another way to say that the VIX may help explain investor confidence in the stock market. It's based on S&P 500 index options. The higher the volatility number is, the faster a stock will often move up and or down. So the more and faster the market drops, the higher we see the VIX can spike. Sometimes there is a spike in the VIX followed by it going back to its previous range as new information comes into the market which explains things and sometimes reduces the fear and uncertainty which is when the markets can start stabilizing. So how can you use the VIX? Well you can follow the VIX and determine if you think that that is how the stock market is behaving or should behave in the near future. Now I personally don't worry too much about the VIX as I'm not a short term investor but I do like to learn about all aspects of the market and thus this is no different. If someone had a ton of money to dump into the market and were feeling risk averse, they might be fearful of a high VIX and instead might choose to slowly dollar cost average over a longer period of time until things settle down. I can understand that even though I don't always do that. I see a VIX under 12 is nice and low whereas a VIX over 20 is high. Some people like to see high volatility for their investment strategies. For example, some people like to invest in ETFs more when the VIX is high and then go after single stocks when it's low. Sometimes when the VIX is rising it means that stocks may follow the broader market more closely and fundamentals are more likely to get disregarded at an individual level. Or to say that differently, if the VIX shoots up and the index is crashing then your single stocks might also crash even though their fundamentals haven't changed. Or if the index is shooting up when the VIX is high then it might push your single stocks up too even though they don't necessarily have the fundamentals to merit that increase. So what does it mean if we're in a low volatility environment? Well if you look back a few years when the VIX was under 12, then seeing the Dow or S&P 500 moving half a percent in a day was a big deal and might have meant watch out. These days with the VIX around 30, no one should be freaking out when the market moves half a percent in a day as that's more the norm. So as you might expect, the VIX spikes during crashes, like in the banking crash of 2008 or in the March pandemic drop off this year. The highest the VIX ever got intraday was in 2008 during the banking crisis where it hit 89. In March of 2020 the VIX hit and closed at 82 which was the highest level since the 2008 financial crisis and that spike was due to the pandemic and the Russia Saudi Arabia oil price war both of which we still have as well as probably due to the news of the travel ban to the US. What other macro events can bring on stock market volatility? Well important elections, wars, etc. So when the VIX is spiking that often means there's panic which can translate into panic demand for puts as a hedge against further declines in portfolios. When the VIX is low it may mean we're in a bullish period which means there is less fear which can then mean there are less people buying puts. Some people choose to invest in inverse VIX ETFs which profit from the opposite movement of the VIX. They can help protect your portfolio during super volatile times but they can also be risky. One popular inverse ETF is SVXY which is the ProShares Short VIX Short Term Futures ETF. In 2017 it returned over 180% but then at one point in 2018 it had returned minus 90%. So fast up fast down. Another way some investors trade the VIX is with exchange traded notes aka ETNs which are collections of rolling VIX futures contracts. ETNs can be relatively cheap but they aren't identical to the spot VIX where there are some even riskier leverage ETNs so careful. I firmly believe you can't time the markets. Sometimes a low but spiking VIX in a bull market might make you think a crash is coming. 
but it doesn't always happen, or if it does, it can recover quickly. However, some consider going into more conservative investments when volatility is high. Bottom line, I wouldn't recommend trading in the VIX or any of these because a simpler option, which is less stressful and can yield positive outcomes, is just to invest in quality stocks over long periods of time, potentially your entire life. Anyways, rather than just looking at the VIX number by itself, some people like to trend it over time in moving averages and use it as ratios or against other metrics to glean more insights into what may happen in the markets. Now, there are two main ways stock market volatility is measured. Number one is based on using historical stock prices and statistical models. Of course, this isn't always an accurate measure of future volatility since it's based on past prices. Number two is based on stock option prices. Options depend on the probability of a stock's current price moving up or down to a particular point, which is called the strike price or exercise price. For example, let's say J&J is currently trading at 144 and has a call option with a strike price of 150 and is valid for one month. The price of its call option depends on what the market's perceived probability is that J&J stock will go from 144 to 150 within one month. So this can be seen as a volatility factor, which is the possibility of stock's prices moving up or down within a specific time frame. That all being said, and as the saying goes, the past isn't necessarily indicative of the future. Also, some smart investors say that the VIX is merely a measure of the current price of index options rather than a good measure of future volatility. So like all things in the market, I suggest that your best course of action is to research and learn and then draw your own conclusions. Okay, now let's change gears and I wanna share a quote I saw on Instagram, which I think is from Buddha. By the way, follow me on Instagram at GenXDividendInvestor where I post short blurbs of my videos and some other things. This quote said, Never blame anyone in your life. Good people bring happiness, bad people bring you experience, the worst people bring you lessons, and the best people bring you memories. Everyone who comes into our life, whether they hurt us or love us or leave us, help us grow and become the person that we're capable of becoming. Reflect on that. Each person helps you grow, whether you realize it in the moment or not. Okay, now I wanna tell you an inspirational story I found online that I think you'll like. In ancient times, a king had a boulder placed on a roadway. He then hid himself and watched to see if anyone would move that boulder out of the way. Some of the king's wealthiest merchants and courtiers came by and simply walked around it. Many people loudly blamed the king for not keeping the roads clear, but none of them did anything about getting the stone out of the way. A peasant then came along carrying a load of vegetables. Upon approaching the boulder, the peasant laid down his burden and tried to push the stone out of the road. After much pushing and straining, he finally succeeded. After the peasant went back to pick up his vegetables, he noticed a purse lying in the road where the boulder had been. The purse contained many gold coins and a note from the king explaining that the gold was for the person who removed the boulder from the roadway. Moral of the story? Every obstacle we come across in life gives us an opportunity to improve our circumstances, and whilst the lazy complain, others are creating opportunities through their kind hearts, generosity, and willingness to get things done. That story reminds me of those hidden camera videos where good-hearted FedEx or UPS drivers go above and beyond in their jobs. Like they might see a USA flag that has fallen over and they pick it up or they help straighten something messy on your front porch. When is the last time you left a nice note or present for your Amazon delivery driver or mail carrier? Have you ever taken your good neighbor's garbage cans to the curb on garbage day because you saw that they forgot to? When you're at work and you notice that something is wrong or out of place, whether it's a mess in the kitchen or a problem in another area, it may be worth tackling it even if it's not in your normal job responsibilities. Now you may have to navigate the situations carefully and you have to understand the culture of your company and its people because you could piss someone off by helping out areas outside your job description. But I've personally found that going above and beyond in your job as well as areas outside your job can yield awesome results. And not to mention it's emotionally satisfying to simply help out. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Leave me a comment if you did, I'd really appreciate it. These videos take a lot of time and energy for me to create, so I'll really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and click that bell notification. Finally, don't forget to check out my Dividend Discord server, which has over 5,000 investors on it. And don't forget, the scariest thing about October is that Christmas decorations are already starting to appear in stores. <laughs> Merry Halloween and happy holidays. I am not a financial advisor and these videos are for entertainment, inspiration, and educational purposes only. Investing of any kind involves risk. I am only sharing my opinion with no guarantee of gains or losses on investments.